I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 13. And in this first module, we, we will begin to look at long-term notes and present value concepts. It's going to take several additional modules to work through this material because of its complexity. Let's begin, though, by considering that from the prior chapter, we looked at a short-term note. Now we're going to think about notes payable that may extend over two, three, or even five years. Often term loans involve interest only. The principal amount of the note is due at maturity. For example, we might have a $10,000 five-year 8% note with interest paid annually on September 30th. In this case, the first entry involves borrowing the $10,000 debit, cash, and credit notes payable. At each annual year end, December 31, we would need to accrue interest. So I'm accruing $200 of interest here for October, November, December. And each September 30th, when interest payment of $800 is due, that $800 is 8% of the $10,000. $200 of that was previously accrued, and $600 relates to nine months of the new year. This process would continue each year until the final year at maturity when we pay not only $800 of interest for the last year but the $10,000 principal as well. Now, in contrast to the term note that I illustrated, recognize that other notes may involve payments over the life of the note so that principal and interest are paid uniformly over the borrowing period and at the end of the life of the note, the note will have been fully paid off. These are commonly used for real estate transactions. To calculate the amount of payments on these notes requires an understanding of both present and future value calculations. Sometimes these notes are called mortgage notes because the property secures payment of the note. If the party that owes the money doesn't make payment, the lender can go take back the real estate. All right, so let's think further about future value as we move forward in consideration of this. The amount to which an interest earning amount is expected to grow over a stipulated time period at a given interest rate is its future value. For example, if $1 is invested for one year at 10% interest, you can logically see that you would expect it to grow to be $1.10. That is, 10 cents of interest added to the $1 investment would cause the future value to grow to $1.10. If we go to the second year, if the dollar ten is invested for another year at 10%, then it would earn 11 cents of interest. A dollar ten times 10% would earn 11 cents of interest, which would be added to the dollar ten, so that our future value at the end of the second year would be a dollar twenty-one. And this process could continue year after year after year. So one could say, how much would a dollar grow to in 10 years? at 10% interest compounded annually. And future value amounts are also called compound interest. The investment grows with accumulating interest and the interest is earning interest on the previously accrued interest. In contrast to compound interest is simple interest. It does not provide for interest on the interest so that a dollar invested for two years at 10% per year, simple interest would simply grow to $1.20, 10 cents two times. Let's consider a formula, one plus i to the nth power. This reveals how much a, an investment of one dollar would grow to after n periods at the interest rate of i per period. So for example, if one dollar was invested for five years at six percent, it would grow to about a dollar thirty-four. That is 1.06, 1 plus 0 0.06 or 1.06 to the fifth power is 1.34. Or if $1,000 was, was invested for five years at 6%, it would grow to $1,338.23. That is 1,000 times the 1 1.06 to the fifth. You can do these calculations each time, just one plus i to the n, and, and calculate your future value. But it can be calculated in other ways as well. There's other tools. There's spreadsheet software. Uh, there are business analyst type calculators. There's future value tables. You can even see the supplements at principlesofaccounting.com to see examples of various future value tables that show how much one dollar would grow to after the designated number of periods of time at the indicated interest rate. Present value is simply the reverse of future value. It's how much a dollar to be received in the future is worth today. In many ways, it's a reciprocal of the future value amount. By formula, it's one over one plus i to the n. For example, $1,000 to be received five years from today, if the interest rate is 7%, is only worth $712 today. That is $1,000 times one over 1 1.07 to the fifth power. Again, there's present value tables, there are present value calculators, there are spreadsheet algorithms that will do this. Uh, these were lump sum amounts. Annuities are streams of level payments occurring on regular intervals. For example, if one dollar is invested at the beginning of each year at 5% interest per year for five years, it'll grow to $5.80. 
It can be calculated by summing future value amounts associated with individual payments. For example, the first payment would be invested for five years and the future value factor of 1.27, that's 1.05, the interest rate, 1.05, to the fifth power. So the first dollar would be invested for a full five years and grow to $1.27. The second payment would only be invested for four years and its future value is only $1.21. And so it would go for each year. We could then total up and find that the $5.80 amount is the summation of the individual future value amounts. It's easier to use spreadsheets, calculators, and future value tables perhaps. These future value amounts are useful in financial planning, such as finding a target amount to invest each year to accumulate to a certain amount by a certain age, for example, in retirement planning. Now, the reverse of future value is present value, and we can also look at the present value of annuities. For example, if we're going to have $1,000 coming in each year for five years, assuming an 8% interest rate, we can calculate that the present value of that annuity is $3,992. You're going to need to take a little bit of time and look at the textbook and look at the present value and future value tables and be sure you understand you know, these illustrations. There's additional illustrations in the book, of course. It's very important that you now begin to get your arms around present value and future value calculations. This topic is introduced in this chapter. If you want to really skip ahead and look at chapter 24, there's even a much more in-depth coverage of future value and present value calculations.